I have with me, without a doubt, one of the strangest looking mini PCs. Well, I can't really call it that because it's not exactly mini, as you can see, it stands upright. This is a small form factor PC that is from Atomman. It's the G7Ti. Now, it is the fastest of the small form factor PCs I've covered in the channel. This has the Core i9 14900HX, and it's an absolute beast of a chip. It has 24 cores, 32 threads, Turbo's at 5.8 gigahertz, and it's paired up with an RTX 4070 that's at 140 watts. So it's a higher power version. It has two PCIe 4.0 SSD slots, one of which is occupied with a one terabyte crucial drive, and it's running Windows 11 Pro. I'll be going over the pros and cons of this machine, exactly what you can expect for this pricey small form factor PC which is retailing currently at the time of this video for about 1470 euros, which is a little pricey and pushing really the boundaries of what you should be paying, I think, for this kind of tech, considering you can probably get a laptop with the same spec or very similar for around about that price. So this is what is included in the box. We get a power supply, rather large, but it's powerful, 280 watts, HDMI cable, this is the stand for it, two screws to screw that stand, the mount into place, and an EU power cable. So here we have a design that is familiar. Yes, I've covered a Minis Forum mini PC, well, small form factor PC, can't really call it a mini PC, can I? That had this kind of look to it because it was a repurposed gaming laptop's motherboard, which this basically is a gain here. So here we have the different power modes and fan mode. You've got your office mode, which is just 140 watts, still a lot, but it's 2700 RPM the fans will spin at. And if you tap that and put it into the gaming mode, that's 180 watts and it brings it up to 4400 RPM. And I'll cover those fan noises with my fan sample later on. We've got a power button here. The plastics, they feel all right. There's nothing wrong with that. And here we have a type A USB 3.2. There's two of those there, SD card slot and 3.5 millimeter with microphone support. Then along the back, you can see two exit vents where the hot air is gonna go out. So from here and then from here, you'll see when we look at the internals, how that's all planned out, the copper transfer heat pipes. And we've got gigabit LAN, I believe this is, because they just say on their website, just RJ45, they don't actually state the speed of it. And this is another type uh, A there, 3.2 USB, HDMI 2.1, so there's no display port. However, we do get this, which is a full spec USB 4 that does support data, power delivery, and video out. So you can get 8K 30 with that, and then I'll 19 volts power in. Now along the top here, that's the exit van, or one of four of them there, and the bottom is the same. So the stand does have a bit of a gap there. It doesn't push right up to it, so the air can still go out of this. It's not gonna block it completely. And this is where, of course, you screw in that mount. Now, we'll take a look at the internals to see what is upgradable with this. Now, on one side, it just has this metal with this matte finish. And on this side here, you've got this, which is our ventilation. So all the fresh air is being sucked in. There's the two cooling fans inside. And this should act as a bit of a dust filter. So it should be easy enough to just wipe this down with a microfiber cloth or vacuum it to get rid of the dust. Now the internals do look very good and I have confirmed my suspicions that this is in fact a motherboard that's for a gaming laptop because I did find a header on the motherboard and I'm just trying to think where it is, just along here somewhere, uh, that does state BAT and here it is right here. So this is where the battery connector would be. If this was a laptop, you'd have your battery right here. Besides that, the build quality is very good and I like what I'm seeing here with the cooling. It's like MSI's Cooler Booster 5. So we do have the one, two, three, four, and five copper transfer cooling pipes there. We've got a DDR5 RAM. That's it, 5,600 mega transfers. You can upgrade that. Wi-Fi card is the BE200 and that's Wi-Fi 7. And we have our two. It almost tricked me to start with. I thought, hang on, that's only one. M.2 slot, it's one right here, and then just above it is another. And I've already installed a different SSD here for data and whatnot. So it's great we have that expandability. So at least there are some components that can be upgraded. Of course, you cannot upgrade the CPU. And we have that very powerful uh, 14900HX and the RTX 4070 at 140 watts. So the layout's pretty good, just like a, 
our laptops because, well, that's what it is, a gaming laptop motherboard, but now reallocated and designated as a small form factor PC. So this is our BIOS here. And while we have a few options in here, it's not open to us uh, completely unlocked because when you go into the advanced mode, you go under where you can see power performance. It's not like you can go and override this with your own power limit and no undervolting right here. However, you can undervolt if you use throttle stop. I managed to do it with throttle stop. Chipset, it gives us a few options like uh, auto power on support. If you wanted to run this as a server or something, you can have that enabled. And then you got your typical secure boot, boot order. That is about it. Now, when I go back here to the easy mode, you can see here, you can choose between those two power options. So the work mode and the game mode, which is gonna adjust the, the fans and the power limits and our boot sequence here, discrete GPU only. For some reason, the UHD graphics that this does have, the Intel integrated graphics, is disabled, which for gaming performance is ideal because it's like a MUX switch. So we're bypassing the integrated graphics and all that, it's gonna help the performance. However, if you edit videos like I do, I still want the integrated graphics for Intel's Quick uh, QuickSync support, but we don't have that because the iGPU is disabled. So I hope that Mini's Forum can add this with a BIOS update. Okay, so the Atom Man G7Ti does come with Windows 11 Pro, not the home version, which is good. And our RTX 4070, this only has eight gigabytes of VRAM, However, it's a more powerful 140 watt version. You sometimes see the lower watt versions in a lot of laptops and it's a laptop GPU. And as I pointed out, it's basically a laptop motherboard that's in here. Wi-Fi 7 BE200, that is a future proof card. Most people don't have Wi-Fi 7, myself included, I do not. And only the gigabyte LAN port on here, bit disappointing. So it's not 2.5 gig. Uh, that port here, which would have been really nice. Now we're gonna see the HX, or sorry, should I say the 14900HX listed here 32 times because it has 32 threads in total, 24 cores, maximum turbo is 5.8 gigahertz. So it's quite a monster of a chip. It's a little power hungry, but you know, we don't have a battery with this. This is a small form factor PC, so it's not an issue. It's got a huge amount of raw performance there, which we'll take a look at in a second. But I wanted to show you this, which is the built-in control panel. So this is where we can adjust the lighting effects, RGB on that front, which is just that little strip there. And to be honest, it's, I don't know, kind of pointless, we don't need it. But some people may like this. Well, you can turn it on if you want. I normally actually just keep that off. So we have system settings here, you can see the load there of our CPU, the GPU, temperatures too, and storage capacity, how full that is. Bit of information on the fan RPM and the power modes and fan mode at the top. You can toggle it here or just tap the button physically on our small form factor PC. So if you go into the settings, again, we cannot swap over and put it into a iGPU mode too as well. You can see it's got the animation while well, the graphics here for that but it simply has that deactivated and I hope a BIOS update will correct this. There's a quick cooling option which puts it into a fan boost mode. You can disable the Windows key if you wanted to and that really is it. It's all straightforward and most of this information we have in the BIOS anyway with it. So benchmarks onto just a few. So Cinematch R23, multi-core score here is impressive. 27,000 points, just over. And this is without any undervolting. These are stock scores here. Single core score of almost 2,000 points, again, is excellent. So it's a, a very fast chip. And the other benchmarks I do have uh, for this particular chipset here are 14900HX. This is here, single core score of almost 3,000, multi-core of 17,000, very strong performance. Now with a little bit of an undervolt using throttle stop, I can then take that score up to just over 3,000 and 18,447 for multi-core score. So that's a nice little free boost. And while it's not a lot, it still is a super good score here considering. And then our OpenCL score, this was the stock score. And you can see that it's not bad at all. RTX 4070 and times by stock score here too, reaching almost 
13,000 points. Very good, so capable GPU we've got here for 1440p gaming, as you'll see, and even a bit of 4K gaming, depending on the title, and 1080p, yeah, flawless 1080p, it can handle that with really good frame rates. And with an overclock on the GPU and an undervolt, I managed to bring that score up to then just over 14,000 points, which is phenomenal. Very good for an RTX 4070 graphics score there of 13,565 and our CPU score there just over 18,000 points. So that is excellent. Really good performance from those synthetic benchmarks. And lastly, just a quick little test here. How does it handle video files? Well, RTX 40... 70s doing the decoding of course the integrated gpu as i mentioned has been disabled but the performance of the decoding is very good here no noticeable lag or slowdown this jellyfish file is running the same doesn't seem to have any drop frames if there is any it's probably my capture card lagging behind a little you can probably hear the fan noise at the moment. The video editing seems to get it worked up a little bit. The fan is on quite full because it's pushing both the CPU and the GPU hard. But as you can imagine, with the RTX 4070 and then that 14900HX, that the performance with the Core i9, really good. There is no noticeable lag at all. I mean, this timeline for 4K 100 megabit uh, per second clips here is extremely good. Really, it seems to be as good as my desktop PC. I'm not seeing any performance losses there at all. Now, the important one is the encoding time, but it's not going to be as fast as it could be because we don't have Intel QuickSync. Remember that the integrated graphics, as I pointed out a few times, has been disabled. So I'm going to go with the YouTube preset here, and we'll see how long it takes. Just to confirm, YouTube preset 4K, and this time around, because it's a dedicated GPU, I'm going to encode the whole 10 minutes and 41 seconds. We'll see how long that takes. It should be very quick considering the hardware on board. So it is finishing up now, and until this bar completely disappears, I won't hit pause here. This is very good considering it's 10 minutes and 41 seconds at the YouTube 4K preset. And the RTX 4070 doing most of the work and the GPU wasn't really under that much load. Okay, so there we go. Safe to say with my little delay, they're about 2 minutes and 48 seconds, 47 seconds. Impressive. It's very quick, but it could have been a little faster if we had the integrated graphics enabled and Intel's QuickSync, which Adobe Premiere Pro takes advantage of. Onto the graphics performance, I expect this to be good considering we've got an RTX 4070 and it does run at 140 watts, that's the maximum. So I have 4K set here with a high preset for Assassin's Creed Valhalla. I'll run the in-game benchmark and take a look at the results that we're going to get out of this for 4K gaming. So I did see the GPU hitting only about 115 watts, the RTX 4070. It doesn't look like it's going to ever use the 140 watts by the way. So average frame rate is 53. So that's on the high preset. So for 4K gaming with this title, you want to lower that down to medium to achieve at least 60 frames per second. Cyberpunk 2077, because this is a really demanding game. I have it set to 1440p and our graphics preset I'm going with. Uh, well, we'll test out high. I think it should be able to high, handle high at 1440p just fine. Let's have a look at the benchmark. I finished up with a very respectable 96 frames per second average for 1440p with the high preset, which I think is very good for an RTX 4070. The Witcher 3 here at 4K medium preset. I'm getting around 60 frames per second in quite a demanding area of the map. I haven't set VSync on or frame lock, but I probably should. But we'll have a look at some gameplay to slice and dice up these guys. Very simple, easy enemies. And it's not really dropping from 60. So if you don't mind gaming at 4K at 60 frames per second, well, it's going to handle it. Now, if you want something like 144 frames per second, drop the resolution down to 1440p and then run medium preset. It should be able to handle it just fine as RTX 4070. 
and our temperatures. So after all of that gaming, the stress tests, benchmarks, video editing, uh, we got to 95 degrees on our Core i9-14900HX. Being an Intel, that's not a surprise to me at all. And remember, this is in the gaming performance mode. It is using a power limit of 115 watts maximum. And then what did our GPU get up to? Let's take a look at that too as well, because I don't think it really got over 70 degrees. It seemed to be pretty good, the GPU. I'll uh, just find that. Okay, we got, okay, 79, sorry. Oh, that's actually stating memory junction was 80. Hotspot temperature 91, but 79 for the GPU. That seems fine. And it did tell me that it ended up pulling 145 watts from that GPU. Okay, that's a bit of a surprise. It must have been out of some of those benchmarks that I did run like Time Spy because in gaming, it would normally sit around 115 watts maximum there. Fan noise, yes, it's there, especially in the gaming mode. Now in the office mode, it's not too bad. It's a lot more bearable, but you will hear it. It's not an irritating, whining, high-pitched noise or anything like that. Sounds like a gaming laptop because as I've already mentioned a few times, it basically is. But here's a worst case test now of the fan noise, stressing it out, and this is as loud as it's going to get, which you're definitely going to hear. All right, so that Core i9, the 14900HX, you see it in top-end gaming laptops that sell for around about 3,000 US dollars, 3,000 euros, but normally paired up with an RTX 4090 or 4080, this, the 4070, still performs very well, so capable at 1440p gaming, and even some titles at 4K, if you don't mind gaming at 4K 60 frames per second. And if you run something like GTA 5, well, it will pay, play that game, high settings, 4K, and you'll be getting 120 frames per second, if not more. So it's got a lot of power to it. Now we do have that SSD slot, the secondary one, so you can amplify, or sorry, expand upon your storage there, which is a good option to have. You can upgrade the RAM and even swap out the Wi-Fi card. So we have some good options there, Wi-Fi 7, but only the gigabit LAN and not 2.5 gigabits there, which would have been nicer to have the faster speeds there, or even 10 would have been good. As a system, a small form factor PC, it's very unusual. As I showed you, and we know this, that it is a repurposed gaming laptop motherboard. The internals worked into a PC here. That is, okay, it's very slim, far smaller than my desktop, and I can even put this behind my monitor, which makes it look really good. It keeps it all out of the way. So that is great to it. But the pricing, about 1400 euros at the time of this video, it's a little pricey. I think too much there, because if you factor in that you can probably buy an RTX 4070 laptop for about 16 or 1700 euros at least in Spain. I know in the US people have much better prices and you can probably get something with maybe even uh, a slightly better GPU or close to the 4080 for that. So it's an unusual product that wouldn't you just go for a laptop and plug it in, run it through an external monitor if that's what you are after. But if you are someone that never uses uh, their laptop as an actual laptop, you normally just run it with an external monitor, mouse and keyboard, then this is exactly what this is. And maybe it's gonna be something that, that would be ideal for you. So for video editing for me, this has been really fast and good, but I'm a little disappointed that the integrated graphics has not been enabled. That is disabled. And Linux, just to mention it here, that yes, this will be able to run Linux. It can run it and no problems with it at all. Although drivers, you may have a few issues there. So that's the low down there, the full story of the Atom Man G7 Ti, a very unusual small form factor PC that has a huge amount of power. The most powerful that I've tested out yet in the channel. Thanks a lot for watching this video.